Welcome back. More than 500 assaults and robberies were committed against women in Gen Germany <coughs> on New Year's Eve. And refugees from the Middle East are being blamed for the majority of those assaults. Jim Mills, what you do know, you think about that? Jim, I agree with that because uh, Germany has, the Chancellor has brought in over a million refugees. And now the million, you're going to have a lot of bad apples. And, and now there's bad apples. I mean, it's posted on the video. I saw it on TV this morning. You know, Muslims or Syrians beating women up, causing havoc uh, to the point of sexual assault, which is, you know, you can't do that. But, you know, what are they trying to do? Make a stance here? Or will they, you know, we're supposed to, well, they that's want the help. Question. Is it a cultural thing, maybe? I well, mean, that's what I was going to ask. You know, it, yeah. because women are, you know, really, you know, under Sharia law, mm -hmm. Roman are degraded. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, is <laughs> degraded that a is a very thing? generous well, term. I, in all yeah. fairness, let's stop for one second here. So, there's a couple of things that I think play into this. Uh, and I, I've lived in Germany uh, okay. for a while. And Germany is, is, you know, I think Germany, there, there are things that we as a country in the United States do very well that European countries are not doing as well, which is in terms of integrating people. So, mm -hmm. Germany is a great country if you're a German. The less German you are, the less of a great country it is. Right. And yes, they're being very welcoming. I think they've done a good job of welcoming refugees. Now, in this particular case, there were, there were, what they were saying is they were primarily North African refugees. So from Morocco, mm -hmm. Algeria, those countries. Now, speaking of Sharia law, all these guys were drinking heavily on, uh, on New Year's Eve. So that right there tells you they're probably not Islamic fundamentalists because they're not okay. allowed to drink. Fair enough. Um, I don't think there's any excuse for anybody, regardless where they're, wh where they're from. And they've had a lot of problems in, in Germany, especially in East Germany, mm -hmm. with the neo-Nazis doing very similar things. Yeah. So it's not necessarily, I think it's, it's unfair to some degree to characterize this as being an ethnic issue so much as it is a social issue. So but but, I, but is ethnic to the extent that, you know, when you have two cultures, when you, when you talk about integration, right, when we integrate people, if we integrate them in small numbers, that is a lot easier than when we integrate them in large numbers, yeah. just like any other thing. Yeah. So my point is mm -hmm. that had they had such an influx of these refugees that it's just wreaking havoc, havoc and, and are, they a, are they a culture that is becoming unclear because of, of the... Well, and I think you bring up a very good point, which is the fact that you... Immigration and integration has to be controlled. Really, the, if you look at the core issue here, it's because the world community failed to deal with the Syria crisis in any sort of recognizable way that looked like uh, dealing with it. So, and not to get into the politics of the issue, we had a crisis, we didn't manage it correctly, and we have people leaving because they don't want to die. And I think what, you know, the, 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 in, the original intent on the part of Angela Merkel and the German government was to step up to the plate and try to help refugees. But I think you bring a, up a very good point, which is that any culture has the right to protect its cultural integrity. And your, your expectation as a country, as ours should be, is if somebody wants to immigrate here, and I, I come from a family of immigrants, so I can relate to this much more closely, you want those people to become a part of your culture and to assimilate into your culture, not to bring change their culture, culture over right. and try to change your culture. Ken, there are some that suggest that this may have been an orchestrated attack. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, honestly, I, I, don't, I don't give much stock to it. I mean, I really don't. You know, now, now something that I really do give, uh, you know, a lot of stock to, and this is something that probably hasn't been talked about much on the media, <laughs> is what are the gun laws like in Germany, Colin? Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're fairly restrictive. Mm -hmm. um, and Can you get a concealed carry in Germany? No, you cannot. Okay. The, uh, there or, is or a actually, great... Actually, I think, I think you yeah, can, but you, there is a lot of... Carry. So I looked it up, and basically you have like to be... You have, yeah, oh, it's actually worse than Maryland. You have to be a high-risk individual, such as a politician or celebrity, in order to get a concealed carry in Germany. Or you have to be somebody's private security. So, you know, that right there is a huge differentiator mm -hmm. between the United States and Germany in that the Germans, they don't have as much capability to protect themselves as we do here in the U.S. You know, to be perfectly honest with you, and I, this gets bandied around, when, you, when you're dealing with a situation where you're in a public space with thousands of people, would, would any of those women have been protected if they pulled out a gun? 
Well, but keep well, in I mind just, also, I, you've I also really got the, the potential that, oh, hey, I don't know if the person I'm attacking has a firearm or not in the U.S., where in Germany, you're pretty much guaranteed they're not going to have a firearm. Yeah, you Agreed. know, to be honest, I think it's a bigger Agreed. issue than that. And I, it, again, I think in some situations when it comes to home protection, when it comes to other situations, that applies more. In this particular issue, we're dealing with a bunch of hoodlums. Oh, yeah. So, you know, this could have happened in Baltimore just as easily. It could have happened in New York City. Well, it wouldn't happen in Baltimore. Everybody's armed in Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> Not legally, but yes. Jim Mills, the, uh, you know, there are other countries that are either have or are looking at substantial uh, refugee intake. Is this a sign of things to come? Is this what we should expect? You know, yes, it is. But, you know, I think, like you were saying before, I think the, the world is... Uh, trying to make up for what they didn't do to help Syria out. So my thing is, why don't we just put them in a, in a country where they can just re -re rebuild and come back and take their country back? As Americans, we would not allow our country to do that. I think we would sit back and say, we're taking our country back. Right. Why can't there's a lot of young men to come back and fight for Syria and take over that government and make it a democratic. Well, and you know, well, unfortunately, a, we yeah. haven't created the, the, the environment for them, and that's one of the I, things that we should have done. We should have done. Now, yes. of course, the, the other issue that we're running into is there are very few countries in the neighborhood that are willing to host those people and to allow us to train them to go back in. And of course, the the efforts we've made at training the the Free Syrian Army have been laughable at best. Yes. But you know, and you're going to get the last word on that because it's time to wrap up. So stay tuned. Because when we come back, Jim Mills, our former Marine, or I guess it's once a Marine, always a Marine. That's right. Uh, Jim Mills, our Marine, will talk about uh, ISIS terrorist recruiting. And this is happening in our backyard. Stay tuned. We're back at three.